Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Equation Stripped, where I take some of the most important equations in maths and then strip them back layer by layer so that anyone can understand. This time we're looking at logarithms, or logs as they are known for short. And these used to be incredibly useful for computations, but with the modern invention of computers, we don't really use them specifically for that anymore. But they still have a really important role to play in modern mathematics and science. In particular, they're used for helping us to understand concepts, and they are very important in fields such as thermodynamics and information theory. For our first layer, I'm going to discuss why logarithms are so useful. And the main reason for this is that they tell us how to multiply numbers by instead doing addition. So for example, if you want to multiply to 10 digit numbers, nowadays of course you stick it in a calculator, you use a computer. But back in the 1600s when logarithms were first invented, of course you didn't have computers so you couldn't do that. And to multiply together two 10 digit numbers, there are around 200 steps. So it's going to take a while. Whereas if you could somehow convert the multiplication of two 10 digit numbers into the addition of two 10 digit numbers, you only have to do around 20 steps. So that is a decrease by tenfold. The invention of logarithms meant that you could do calculations much, much faster. And so it allowed scientists to make progress with calculations of the orbits of the planets, of trajectories of comets, and even more recently on understanding radioactive decay. For layer number two of the logarithm equation, we're going to look at where logarithms came from. And in order to do that, we need to think about powers of numbers. So if we take the two simple examples of 10 squared and 10 cubed, and this just extends to algebra, so instead of having a number such as 10 squared or 10 cubed, we could have a squared, for example, which is just a times a. Or we could have a cubed, which is just a times a times a. Now, what happens if we do 10 squared times 10 cubed? And writing this in shorthand, in the same way that we have two tens is 10 squared, three tens is 10 cubed, here we have five lots of 10, and so this is just 10 to the 5. And the same thing would be true if we did a squared times a cubed. And the reason I've sort of spelt it out for you like this is because when you multiply two powers, what you actually do is you just add the powers together. And taking what we've just learnt and writing the law in the most general algebraic form possible, what we've basically been doing is using the idea that x to the power y times x to the power z is just equal to x to the y plus z. That's all there is to it. And you can see here that we're beginning to turn a multiplication problem of two numbers into an addition problem. So let's take a simple example. Suppose we want to work out the multiplication of two numbers. So let's make these decimal numbers to make it a bit trickier. Pretty simple to do on a calculator or a computer, but if they don't exist, which we're assuming they don't here, that's quite a difficult sum to work out. And what we want to do is to be able to convert this multiplication into an addition. And that is where logarithms are going to help us. And our starting point is going to be this power law. Both of our two numbers are written in terms of x. So this is our first number, this is our second number, and both of them are written in terms of x to the power of something. So here, x, we have a choice of what that can be. So I'm going to say, let x be 10. And what we want to do is write 1.45 as a power of 10, and write 3.85 as a power of 10. And so, using this now, we know what the answer is. It's just 10 to the power of the sum of the two powers, which is 0.746. We can just add the two powers together. And again, we do some arithmetic. That tells us that the answer is 5.5 
seven, two. Now, at first glance, this may seem more difficult than just doing the original multiplication, and you're probably right. It's, it's adding extra steps, and we have to work out powers of 10, decimal powers of 10. It's quite tricky. But the really important thing here is if somebody somewhere has sat down and worked out every single possible power of 10 and written them all in a giant table and put it into a book called a logarithm table, then this is actually really easy. So step one, you go, right, 1.45, look through my book, find what power of 10 equals 1.45, it's 10 to the 0 0.161, great. 3.85, find that in our book and see, oh look, it's 10 to the 0 0.585. All we do now is just add the two powers together. This is the sort of unknown in the problem, but it's much simpler to add these two numbers, 0 0.161 plus 0 0.585, much easier than trying to multiply the original two. And so we get the answer is 10 to the 0 0.746. And again, we're going to look back at our book because someone's already worked out what 10 to the 0 0.746 is. They've done that for us. And then we get our answer, 5.572. So this is great as long as somebody has worked out those logarithm tables. And that is what mathematicians in the 16 and 1700s did. They would sit there and work out these logarithm tables for all of the different possible choices of base. Stripping back to our third layer now, we're going to look at the equation itself. What this is telling us is that the logarithm of AB is equal to the logarithm of A plus the logarithm of B. And it's one of the main rules of logs. The x term, which appears next to all of the logs, that's telling you in what base you're operating with your logarithm. And so the x here in this equation is the same as the 10 over here in our equation for the example that we just went through. And in terms of understanding what each of these three terms actually mean, perhaps the easiest way to get a grasp on them is to relate them to our example over here. Beginning on the right hand side of our equation with the term in blue, this is telling us that the logarithm base x of a is equal to 0.161. So a here would be our 1.45. This is the number that we want to convert into base 10. And x here is 10. And then the logarithm of a, the logarithm of 1.45 in base 10, is the power 10 needs to be raised to to get 1.45. Similarly, for the term in green, this is the logarithm base x of the number b. b here is 3.85, and so the logarithm base x, where x is 10, of b is the power that 10 has to be raised to to get the answer 3.85, and that would be 0.585. And finally, the term on the left-hand side is telling us that the logarithm base x of a times b is just equal to the sum of these two. And that's exactly what we've done over here. So the term in red is just the power that 10 needs to be raised to to get the product of a and b, which is 0.746. And as we calculated in our example, it's just the sum of the other two terms. Now that we've stripped back to our fourth and final layer, we can start to think about the other properties of logs. So here we have the addition property of logs, which says that log of AB is equal to log A plus log B. And there are other properties that maybe you've been taught at school or university. And now we can start to think about those. So the key here is that, as you've seen in our derivation so far, we've based everything around this rule in terms of powers, this power law. And so, when thinking about other properties of logs, as long as we return back and refer to this law, we can start to make sense of negative powers and of zero powers, and maybe even fractional powers. Now that we've defined negative and fractional powers, we can start to get other properties about logarithms. So, here we know that log of a times b is log a plus log b. The second property of logs is that the log of a divided by b is log of a minus log of b. 
And the reason you're subtracting here is because you're dividing numbers. And dividing by a number is a negative power, as we've seen over here. Another property of logs, which is perhaps the most useful, is this one, which says that the log of a to the power c is the same as c lots of log of a. And this is incredibly useful when working out square roots, cube roots, and higher order roots of numbers. So if you want to work out the square root of x, if you take the logarithm of that, that is equal to the log of x to the half. And using the result over on the left of the board, we know that that is just the half of log x. And so we can just look up in a table what the logarithm of a particular number is in, say, base 10, and then we just take a half of that number and we have our square root. It's so much easier to half a number than it is to work out a square root. And it's the same with cube roots, where this would be a third, or for fourth roots, where this would be a quarter. And this pattern continues. And it just meant that working out very involved calculations involving roots of numbers suddenly became really simple. Thank you everybody for watching. I hope that you now have a better understanding of logarithms and some of their most simple properties, and you also know where this equation came from. Remember, if you like what I'm doing, please do subscribe. That way you'll get a notification when I post a new video. Also, check out my website, tomboxmaths.com. There's all kinds of maths-based fun for you to check out there. And please do follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all at TomRocksMaths. And I will see you soon with another episode of Equation Stripped.